Last time we finished the final stage starters up until the 6th region. Today we're making one for the last 3 regions, Alola, Galar and Paldea. I really hope you like them. For the final stages of Alola, we have the Sijuai, who now has a grassy cape and his wings have gotten a lot bigger as well. We have Incineroar, who is once again a starter who went bipedal and he has built out his fiery element into a blazing belt. Lastly, we have Primarina, who makes sure to add a lot more mermaid elements, like the tail and the starfish for example. For this design I wanted to make sure he looked way bulkier and to move him a bit closer close to the fighting typing as well. We of course started by blocking out the features of our tanky beach snail, but actually made quite a big mistake in that process. Instead of using simple shapes, we immediately started adding details to the shell. This led to a few issues, so we eventually had to go back and draw a box, where we noticed that the entire shell was facing the wrong way. After this quick fix, we were able to make some changes to the facial area. For this final stage we opted into a slightly longer neck than its predecessors. We did this to make our Pokemon look a bit more mature, and the face itself brought back the stony eyebrows, plus another spike to the top of its head. This was changed down the line into a rocky helmet, since I thought it would improve the tankiness look of the Pokemon. We then brought back the necklace of rocks, and then moved our focus into some big strong fists at the top of its antennae. After adding in back the moustache, the design technically would have been finished. I however have learned a lot because of the feedback in the comments, which told me to not shy away from using more little design elements to make our Pokemon feel more interesting. This resulted in using some small shapes on the shell to add a bit more depth into it, because it otherwise would look a little bit too flat. The colors weren't anything too crazy either, and we went with darker versions of the colors of the second stage. Gastroch, the beach snail Pokemon. This Pokemon trains by punching rocks found on the beach, throwing flurries of punches with its antennae. If it manages to find a rock that can withstand its strength, it will simply add that rock to its shell. In hindsight I should have probably looked closer at the colors of the other final stages of this generation, because mine might be a little bit too dark right now. I would however argue that it does look good with its reference, the tank, because it fits in with the RPG classes of the other Pokemon. You can clearly see which one is supposed to be which. I am also just a big fan of this line because it's awesome that a snail evolves into something you might not actually expect. A snail with fists. I wouldn't expect it. Sounds pretty cool to me. But I do want to ask you guys for feedback. Like genuinely, I have grown as an artist pretty hard in the past years and I haven't actually noticed it but it's also due to a lot of help from your comments. Like your insights on my pieces might not actually change the ones that I already made because I'm not going back at them but I use the information you give me on next pieces so please 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 give constructive feedback don't say oh it's bad because it I can't use that but please give constructive criticism on any of my pieces because it genuinely helps me get better and better and better Thank you. <laughs> For the final stages of Galar, we have Rillaboom, who now clearly depicts its reference, a drummer, with of course the big bushy hair and the actual drums he plays. We have Cinderace, who just continues the look of wearing a soccer kit. And we have Intellion, who really does look like James Bond now. I guess we just have to make sure our Pokemon clearly looks like its reference too. Before I started working on this piece, I already knew what I wanted to do for this final stage. I love the chef influence in this line, but I also think it has some amazing pirate-like features with the now serrated blades and the buck teeth kind of extrusion on his beak. With that in mind we started to map out a beefed up body, since I felt like a stronger looking one would work best for the pirate look we were going for. I've noticed I like to make my Pokemon designs with a top heavy build, but I just can't help to find it one of the more enjoyable body types out there, especially with a dramatized small lower body. Now that the body was mapped out, it was time to work on the differences of the middle stage of this line. One of these features would be to give him a pirate head, because that just works perfect for the wanted combination of ideas. 
I did think just a flat pirate hat would be boring, hence why we added some feather like shapes to it as well. This would also be a great way to at least add one new color to the palette. Although this design might have benefited from using a different pose as the others in this line, I felt like it would lose almost all of his chef looks if I didn't bring back one of his arms on his back. The last thing we worked on was to make his eyebrow a bit rougher too, and I added a small chip to each of his blades. For the colors we decided to not do anything too crazy, and the only thing that was drastically different was the red color of one of the feathers. The rest of the colors were just a darker version of the ones from the second stage. I can just see a clear pattern for each of my final stages. Pyra Chef the Iron Chef Pokemon. Its machete like wings and razor sharp beak can cut things with even the small amounts of pressure. Sometimes Pyrochef use their wings to climb instead of flying. The Pokemon Charot seems to enjoy perching on Pyrochef's shoulder, but we are unsure why they do this. Although I do like the direction of this final stage, it might have focused a little bit too much on the pirate influence instead of the chef. I do think it fits and it works, but it also loses something, but I guess it could also be Gordon Ramsay is kind of like a pirate with the way he acts in the kitchen, so it works. <laughs> if we're talking about blending in with the others, it blends in okay. It's nothing good, it's not bad, it's just okay, that's it. I do really like the complete line of these Pokemon, because I think it's awesome that it still looks like a puffin even in the final stage, instead of going for a different kind of bird, because puffins are awesome in my opinion. I also want to say I'm starting to feel a lot more freedom in the creation of these Pokemon, and I could say I'm probably still improving with every piece, but I want to improve more, so I need to do more studies I guess. <laughs> I created a brush head with all my favorite brushes. I use each of them in every drawing that I make, so if you want to draw in the same style as me, I recommend checking out my website. For only 5.99 euros, you can get the Procreate brush set, which you will be able to use in Procreate. It includes an amazing line art brush, a highlight brush which instantly makes your pieces look a lot better, and many other fantastic brushes. I also want to have a written down version of how to create Paradox Pokemon, that's why I created this step by step guide. It's easy to follow and I added a bunch more tips you can use while drawing. You will also get the work files of the two Paradox Pokemon we created. And I added two work files with just a line art, so you can practice coloring and shading. This guide is also available for 5.99 euros on my website. But since I thought you guys might be interested in buying it together with the brush set, I made it into a combi deal for only 8.99 euros for the both of them. And that is a 25% discount, so I know what I would do. <laughs> Now for the final stages of Baldea, we have Meow Scarada who has gotten a full mask and who now has two big grassy paddles on her back. We have Skelly Dirge who is now a complete fiery crocodile with a typical long snout and a cute fiery bird at the end of it. And we have Quaquavel who has evolved into a fully fledged out dancer with some watery elements that perfectly mimic clothes. So for our piece we don't have to be afraid to use a lot of details and elements on the design. As I've had quite a few times before, I wasn't the biggest fan of the middle stage we made. I am happy with the pose I gave it, but it just lacks a lot of the details to make it look more interesting. I did love the first stage of this line, but it would once again come down to this final stage to bring the line home. When I started mapping out the body, I did decide to go out of my comfort zone again. I wanted this pose to feel energetic and to clearly show what it's supposed to reference. This resulted in a pose where it'd be slightly jumping upwards while still holding up its tail with its other hand. This would work as a bullfighter simply because we added back in the red cape to the bottom part of its tail. Another thing we did to make him look more detailed was to add some spikes to the top of its tail and to give him a spike on the tip of it as well. The thing I disliked the most from the second stage was the flat look it has by using only one of the colors throughout the whole body. This was an easy fix for this stage however 
silver. I only had to break up parts with a lighter color, which gave him almost a superhero suit kind of look. The last things we worked on were his face and the mane around it. I will admit that it took me a decent amount of time to figure out what I really wanted to do for the face, but in the end I went with the same shaped snout and decided to add a bunch of new elements to differentiate it from the others in this line. A few of these details were the spike on its nose, the now red eyebrow, the mask like facial marking and the big red spikes on the back of its head. For the mane I decided to make it less round and added a bit more sharpness to the ends of it. This made the entire piece feel more energetic instead of the slower looking middle stage. I also made sure the mane would now actually go over the face a little and it really helped to add a lot more depth into the piece. For the colors we once again went for darker versions of the colors we had used before but with an extra addition of the dark red for the spiky elements on his design. Matadragor, the bullfighter Pokemon. This Pokemon is a beautiful sight to see. It moves gracefully but insanely quickly. It uses both its frill and tail to provoke entire herds of Baldean Tauros to attack. It then uses its agility to easily maneuver through it, upping its ego above healthy limits. If Matadragor ever loses a battle, it usually falls into a deep depression. I would 100% pick this design over the others in this generation. Renderize it might be a bit different from the others but I would say the design elements fit in perfectly with the others. Like perfectly. I love how I was able to make a dynamic pose for this Pokemon. I know it's not perfect. I know there are f many many anatomically incorrections, incorrections mistakes but I am happy because it forces me to try different things and go out of my comfort zone and I have definitely did that so I'm happy. <laughs> this shiny makes this Pokemon just perfect, very huntable, beautiful. Overall 10 out of 10 Pokemon. There are still mistakes in there yes but the design of the Pokemon works beautifully so I'm, I'm happy, I'm proud, perfection. <laughs> Speaking about cool designs, do we like Gastroch, Pyrochef and Matadragor more than a Oh, delicious, delicious, mother.